to the Josh Johnson Show. I'm Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, fellow stand-up comedian Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay, man. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. You know, it's like a yeah. yeah it's pretty. It's a pretty okay mm, couple of weeks and stuff. Like I, I really can't complain. Um, I'm I'm finding though that I like living in New York. Mm-hmm. I'm not always in love with it, but I, I I think that I understand old New Yorkers now because the things that I've okay. seen since I've been here, it's like at a certain point, it does become too much where you're not even like enjoying that there's a story there. You're genuinely like... <laughs> <laughs> no one should see this much, you know? Yeah. No, I know what you mean by that. I definitely know what you mean by that. Because I like to take walks. I like to just go and take a long walk and think or try to get out of my head or, you know, just yeah. a long walk. And I remember one time I walked, I think I walked from, I don't remember where I was in the city, but I walked to Brooklyn. Like I walked home, you know? Yeah. Uh, which took hours. Like this was like, this right. was like a three, four hour walk that I was on. Mm-hmm. And some of it I was listening to a podcast. Some of it I wasn't. Some of it I was just like taking the day in and stuff, you know. It's a nice enough day. And I don't know. At a certain point, you 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 get to a place where it's good to be present, but you don't sometimes you don't want to be present where you are. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you're like, man, sure, it's good that I'm, like, in the moment, yeah. but this isn't a good moment. That was like a vaguely nihilist Hallmark card you just had there. It's always good to be present, but sometimes you don't want to be present where you are. <laughs> you, look, if you are, okay, the best example. No, I, I, get, I, get, I get exactly what you mean. <laughs> it's just, I would like that. I think we should start making cards that are just very neutral like that. Hey, it was it was because it's not even pessimistic. It's not even bad, really. It's just kind of like, eh. <laughs> it's just there are some times where you you only want to be so aware because awareness mm-hmm. is like anything. It's like I even think, you know, this goes against any Zen teaching, but I think even awareness should be in moderation. Like, like, I don't think yeah. that it's healthy to just be locked in all the time. Um, and I realize your life is, you know, you only get one and you only have the time that you have and we don't know how much we have, but Mm -hmm. who to be fully locked in, especially if you're not in a good place that day, you know? Yeah. It's real easy to just then to go like, what's the point of any of it? Just cause you're having a shitty day. I do that all the time. Are you kidding me? (laughs) But like I will go I will go from having an amazing day and being like, you know what, I'm really lucky to have the life I have. And the next day that I'll, then I'll just be like, and it's not even like a depression thing, but it's just like a it's just like eh, nothing matters. Why do I care about anything? I went I went on this walk and I I at one point I sat down, I think I may have been at meatball shop, but I I wanted to just get something to eat and something I know I would like. Like not I I was not feeling adventurous this mm-hmm. day. I, I think I may have even been in a bad mood. Like, I think easily I, I could have been in a bad mood. Anyway, right. I'm sitting outside, taking the day in. And this is, I don't even like eating outside. You know I hate it. I hate eating outside so much. You are a slave. You are at the mercy of the elements. Mm-hmm. And the people that love this, is ju- it's, it's too much for me. The, the fact that when well, you it's eat, like camping, you know? Yeah. That's why people like it. it oh, God. <laughs> Anyone who loves eating outside has not had enough stuff happen outside. Like, like legitimately, <laughs> the, you're, you're, at the, you're at the mercy of whatever passes by, whether that be dirty wind or yeah. like you know a car fl- like like really uh fling some sludge onto the sidewalk you're on the Bears. sidewalk there's no dining out in new york there's no real there's only a couple of beer gardens in the entirety of new york 
So yeah. if you are eating outside, you're eating on the sidewalk. You're you're on the street. You're, yeah. You're at you're at the mercy of the streets of New York. This place yeah. was busy, so I had to eat outside. And for whatever okay. reason, that day it was nice enough. I didn't mind it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like being present. I'm locked into the fact that like the sunlight is hitting everything in a really beautiful way. The there's like a brisk breeze, but it's not it's not consistent and it's not mm-hmm. chilly. And it's just enough like the temperature is just enough that you don't even feel like you're outside. You know that perfect temp that's like it it almost like it, it I know it's not because we would be boiling, but it feels like it matches your body temperature because you just even though you're outside, you feel like there's no weather because it's just such a comfortable temperature. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know, but I've rarely been comfortable outside. It's I'm I'm a large sweaty man. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we talked about this one time while we were walking, maybe when we were doing the Colorado shows, and it was so nice out that we were like, "Oh, it well, see, feels." And I, that, and I think that's because that's an air quality we're not used to. You know, higher elevation sure. stuff like that. So yeah. it felt perfect. You get less of that. I don't know, heavy air. That could be it. Like my thing is basically, I, I said all this to say. I was taking in the moment. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful moment. And it was broken by a couple that, like, sadly wasn't breaking up. This just seemed to be one of their fights that they were having. And they're at at the table behind me. And it's just, you can tell they've been whispering for a while. And now they're too pissed to whisper. And so it's just (laughs) him being like, it's him being like, who even are you? Who even are you? Ah, yes. And I'm like, yes, uh, not today. were they were they were they at one of the other tables? Yeah, or were they just yeah. happened to be they're at the table. Behind That's me. even better. That's even better. So they're outside, and it's and the worst part is that the entire inside is packed, but the mm-hmm. outside is just me and them. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so you're this, a third wheel to this this <laughs> this entire this restaurant is too packed for me to even sit at the bar. Right. But then outside Dang. is empty. It's just me and them. Yeah. And it it's like it was <laughs> it's it's just it's just too much. You know? Like that cuz they're not even having like a nasty fight. Their fight is barely interesting, right? That one uh, at yeah. one point the <laughs> the guy she he says something to her and now they're talking at the level that I'm talking right now. So not loud, but just talking. Just not whispering right. anymore. They're both too yeah. angry <laughs> yeah. to like, you know, worry about company. And <laughs> Their guest, Josh. And basically, out of nowhere, she's like, she's like, I don't even want to talk about this right now. You're embarrassing me. And he's like, in front of who? <laughs> Ouch. Burn. That's a dig at you. <laughs> well, he doesn't see me. He's like back to back with me. He's like, he's like, in front of who? We're outside. All right. <laughs> Am I embarrassing you in front of New York? Yeah. <laughs> and I just and she I, goes you're and she goes you're embarrassing me in front of of podcasts and televisions Josh Johnson. <laughs> what a great way to meet a fan. That'd be the best. It was it was horrible. And then they they managed to eat. So I I, I guess they must have got there like five minutes before I got there because they stopped fighting in time enough to order, then start fighting again. Then they stopped fighting for the little while that they were eating and then started fighting again until the bill came. And it was like the fact. That's too calm. That's too calm while having a fight. If you're fighting before you even order. Yeah. That's the thing. They ate fast so they could argue more. They actually didn't enjoy their food so that they could be like, and another thing. Like that is so wild to me. It was horrible. Yeah. I mean, if I'm honest, though, I would have loved that. But I, lo- I've we've talked before. I'm I enjoy couple fights on the streets. So, yeah, you would have loved this one. Just that's dinner and a show. spaghetti out of your mouth on a sidewalk <laughs> on the in the afternoon too. Like that was my other thing where I was like, either, it happened today. 
No, no, no. This is this is a while back. Okay, but, but I was just wondering, was it a weekday? Because today's a weekday. No, like, it was a you, weekday. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so afternoon. In my head, this is when I was on hiatus. So then in okay. my head, I'm like, okay, y'all are either like me, where you're on some sort of vacation, and one of you has ruined it, yeah, or neither one of y'all has a job anyway. So like, I don't know why. <laughs> Because because here's the thing, if you're out like that, if you're out in the world like that at three thirty, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna presume to know what's going on with everybody's life. But if you can be out in the sun having spaghetti at three thirty on a Tuesday, you got a good <laughs> life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So what are you fighting about? You know, what are y'all fighting Why, about? What are you fighting Cause, about? Because y'all, you clearly got about it the made. Bill. You, you got afternoon weekday spaghetti. What can you be mad about? I'm just saying. Think, think about how many people, like, are are either have to worry about something or have to be at work at three thirty. Oh, for sure. So then the fact that I'm here, y'all are here, everyone mm-hmm. else is here. By the way, I did not expect that place to be packed on a weekday for like like it must have been an entire corporate office's lunch oh yeah late lunch was, yeah. close for private party yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah true Three thirty is a strange time too Three, it, dude i would so first of all i walk in i almost think it's an actual private party like someone's birthday because i've never seen the place that packed even at night so then i, right. I walk in and i'm like something's happening like are they shooting a movie here this is crazy Mm -hmm. right and then they're like oh we have seating outside i'm like oh god (laughs) you hate eating outside so much and generally i don't love it either it has to be the right type of weather for me to want to eat outside have you Um, eaten outside new york yeah oof it's it's the worst here (laughs) i don't even know if i care about why do you think outside other places why do you think it's the worst there? What is it that that really? Bro, there's no get... think. I f- I was farted on. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I'm trying to get to. I'm getting to the goods. This dude. When did you get When did you get farted on while eating I outside went, in New York? I I went to a restaurant with Sally, and mm-hmm. I think it was Mediterranean or something. Went to this restaurant with Sally, and it was good. We were enjoying ourselves. And then this guy passed by and is like playing on his phone or something and just fully, fully lets loose. And you can tell, I actually, I still debate whether or not it was on purpose. Like maybe, like maybe this dude was being a jerk, who knows, but he farted really loud and really hard right as he passed me. And then (laughs) I had a moment of like, uh, uh, and then whether he heard me go uh or whatever he just like bolted around the corner and i was just oh. like so he definitely did fart and it wasn't Probably even farted. like he farted and then laughed or whatever i think this person was genuinely embarrassed um yeah something happened to him there he wasn't expecting that yeah and like honestly we're outside so it's not even like i smelled anything but i just realized as i was as i was out there that if this did happen inside, I'm not saying it can't, but if it did happen inside, there'd be a discussion. You know what I mean? You're not getting away from me that fast inside. Oh, you can't, yeah, you can't sprint away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, you're saying there, there is, there'd be a, a, some slight decorum, perhaps, if it happened inside. I would at least catch up to you and ask you if you have hey, ruined you your pants. Because it didn't sound like a healthy fart. <laughs> oh, see, so this is more coming of uh, concern for them. You're more concerned about this person and their well-being. I guess. I mean, I wasn't that mad. <laughs> I guess. But I would like. I would like to know. It's like, hey, are you gonna live? Like, like there's some noises that come out of a person mm-hmm. where you're like, no, you're you're sick. Yeah. Yeah, that's um. No. Yeah. Yeah, especially I don't know. That's why is it worse that it's someone not at the restaurant with you? It's just a passerby. It's just a passerby because they could be living a dusty life. They could be living <laughs> like a genuinely unhealthy right, life but- where they shoot out hot dog farts at you <laughs> as you're just trying to enjoy your grape leaves. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've been farted on. Gotta say that's a first great reason. 
it's the first great reason to to hate dining outside New York. Mm-hmm. Is, is there any other reason? Because you said, you keep talking with the elements. Has anything happened to you elements wise? This did this did not happen to me because I was inside. Okay, uh, but I saw outside that a bike messenger. At least he looked like a bike. He could have been seamless, but a bike messenger mm-hmm. completely totaled a, a table. Um, so he was not looking, <laughs> oh, no. and like this dude. Okay, this I don't know. I don't even know if I should be laughing about this because everybody seemed genuinely hurt. But he basically, <laughs> this guy was coming out of nowhere, and in New York there are bike lanes, but there aren't enough bike lanes, and the right. bike lanes aren't everywhere. So sometimes yeah, they're not consistent. They're not consistent. Yeah. So sometimes someone, especially if you have a certain route, as as a cyclist, you get on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. This person clearly was turning from a street with a bike lane to a street mm-hmm. without one mm-hmm. and was not looking ahead, was probably looking sideways or maybe right. looking for the bike lane or whatever where it was yeah. going to continue. Because Behind them, they're being chased. To be fair, there was a van. Like this, this, this is what ended up happening. There was a bike lane, right? This mm-hmm. person was in the bike lane. At the turn, like at the intersection, there's a parked right. van that they would have either had to turn more into the road to pass or mount the sidewalk to pass, okay? Gotcha, yeah. When they mounted the sidewalk, whether they were looking at the van or whether they were looking to see if, um, to see if the uh, bike lane was there, they mm-hmm. mounted the sidewalk and then just completely ate up this couple that was sitting at a table outside. Damn. Like it was it was it was really bad. It was it That's was, like a like the person that's like a movie stunt. <laughs> yeah, like the person on the bike went flying first, right? Oh, no. So the person on the bike went flying. Then yeah. the, the the person that they sort of flew over just mm-hmm. slid more onto the table. Then the person that they flew into fell back with them. And so the oh, person that they flew over that's like sp- like pushed into the table, the table just falls sideways. So then all the food falls on that person. But Jeez. it was just, it was like, it was one of those things that when you see it, you immediately think that the the cyclist is in the wrong. But then you see the van and you're like, all right, well, I don't think that should be there because no one was in it. Oh, someone yeah, just yeah. parked their van like you know kind of in the intersection almost mm. but yeah like just imagine you're at, that you're at a restaurant that and the table explodes yeah. <laughs> i was gonna say like yes it sounds bad it sounds like everyone got hurt but Golly, I bet that'd be great to see. I bet. Oh, that, look, look. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be so awesome look. to see. Sounds really bad. I hope everyone was okay. <laughs> Can you imagine? Okay, this is what it looked like. Do you remember the uh, Spider-Man movie from 2001, maybe? The one with yeah, Tobey Maguire, the first The one? original Spider-Man, okay. yeah. The original Spider-Man. Remember, I think it's in the first one or maybe the second one. Where Mary Jane's talking, his spotty sense tingles, and then he grabs her, and because Doc Ock, yeah, it must be a second one, because Doc Ock throws the car into the the coffee coffee shop. shop. Yeah. Okay. Imagine that, but if nobody moved, because the cyclists came crashing into them, and there was no superhero sequence where they dodged anything. (laughs) Every plate hit them, the cutlery hit them, every knee was scraped, like it... It just every everyone flew too much. Everyone because the the cyclist flew so much that I was like, let's make sure he's moving. You know yeah, what I mean? was, this like, a, was this a scene for something? Was this a stunt chase that happened yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. And then the the person who got hit from the back, they they fell like Family Guy style because they also had. <laughs> Like a bent knee yeah. and okay, so not only <laughs> they always have that arm hanging like behind them or whatever. Yeah, so so for the people just listening, okay, for the people just listening, just imagine a person is on the ground and a table is sideways, but mm-hmm. the tablecloth is on them, like tucking them in. The tablecloth <laughs> has fallen on them with the plates, mm-hmm. and they're not moving right away. Everybody, everybody is as hurt as they are surprised. <laughs> Dude, this was this was like genuinely. I thought I had seen. 
I, a death? You thought? Yeah. I thought I had genuinely seen someone like messed up for we're, real. Like we're like, always flirting with it. Yeah. <laughs> the Josh Johnson show, flirting with the afterlife. That's how we are. Because the the way that everyone fell was had to be like the sloppiest way you could fall. Because also these weren't like uh. young people. <laughs> Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this, these were. I do people. know what you're saying, and that—that's the last detail that I didn't want. Like, Dude, that like these people look like they only the, got the two the of those hits in them. Even as, even the cyclist was an elderly man. He wasn't that old, but he was like he I was know, old enough that it. you don't want him to fall off his bike at all, right? <laughs> like he like he didn't look like Biden on a bike, but he looked close, you know. Yeah. And so then the fact that the force that that everyone got hit with Uh. and the fact that everybody flew, you know what it did to me, though, why it was so scary for me is actually Mm -hmm. because of a misconception that I that I had. So growing up, bikes were made of knives. What? (laughs) <laughs> I said that that bikes were made of knives. No, no, no. It's a misconception you had. I jokes. Have watched a lot of Law and Order SVU, right? And in one episode of Law and Order SVU, the way that they start the episode is mm-hmm. this bike messenger who is has been hired by a disgruntled parent who didn't get custody to kidnap his kid back, right? tries to tries to do that at the beginning of the episode so the beginning of the episode okay. is them in a park with a grandma and a kid and then mm-hmm. a guy grabs the kid and is trying to like run and get away puts the kid on his bike the kid's like grandma grandma he's he's pedaling on the bike and he's got some speed and then mm-hmm. just crashes into the grandma hard right now later on in that episode they kill the grandma, okay? So later on in the episode, they're like, oh, Nana didn't make it, right? So then I was like, man, can can a person be on a bike fast enough to kill you, you know? And so when yeah. I saw that, even though I know that they'd have to be going Usain Bolt kicking levels fast to kill you, I still f- had a flashback of when I was younger and that bike messenger hit that old woman and she died in the episode. <laughs> so when I saw the like table explode, <laughs> cause also like food is hitting the window. Right. So like there's little like dips that <laughs> have hit the window and you're not sure what's like, what's sauce and what's blood you know because you're like you're like did these people just explode because i can't see everyone i just love that you had like (laughs) you had a flashback (laughs) to a tv show yeah because dude i thought i thought these people could die i thought that like you have you have ptsd about suv huh don't get mad. It's the no, you. But you said the vehicle. Oh, I did say the vehicle. Yeah, Keep yeah, yeah. it. We'll we'll go again. PTSD from SVU. I think it's because SUV sounded better. Rhyme. It, it does rhyme. Yeah. I think that's why my brain did it. That's why way. I almost didn't say anything. Yeah. Um. PTSDVU. <laughs> Jeez. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, they they like Miami. They they got got that was that was like hard to that watch sounds, and yeah. and in my head I was like man this is this is why one of the reasons why dying out and I've, I've actually I don't know who I've told this story to but you I think this is the first time I'm telling that story and it's to you because I don't think I've ever told wow. Sally about that you were really traumatized by that episode of Law and Order <laughs> dude okay so this this is the thing that happened in my head in the in the restaurant yeah because once again i like i don't really care about eating alone like i'll go i'll go have a meal by myself and just chill right, right, right. especially if i heard the place is good or if it's right there and it yeah. looks you know like reasonable prices yeah. or anything and you're and gonna so, hold a server hostage with conversation anyway so yeah yeah so i'm sitting at the bar <laughs> when this happened right Okay, so you were in the restaurant that it happened out in front of. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. That's even better. And so I'm that's like, like the eating tacos. like the people. It's like the people who are inside in Ghostbusters when Lewis gets attacked by the dog. Dude, I'm, it's just a table explodes and everyone calmly goes back to eating. 
I'm like, and and a couple people. This was so funny to me, right? This is when I knew mm. I was in a different place because this is early when I lived in New York. So I was like, I'm. I think I was in Queens, <laughs> right? And oh, okay. And so then the whole thing happens, and just like bodies flying and everything, and then the <laughs> and then like everybody hit the ground, right? And there was only two tables outside because this is pre-pandemic. So this is just like, hey, we have these two tables. I mean, yeah, these two tables and these four chairs yeah. in front of the restaurant. Everything else is in the right. restaurant. And the restaurant's too small. It's like a little storefront restaurant, right? Yeah, so they don't have a big patio anyway, just a couple seats out front. Yeah, yeah. A couple seats way too close to the sidewalk. And, uh, <laughs> and basically, I'm, I'm sitting there. And I'm like, man, if I had eaten outside, that would have either happened to me or I would have got a closer view of it, which would have been horrible, you know? Yeah. Because, like, the distance No that matter I what, saw you're a part from, of it. Yeah, the distance that I saw it from made it very funny. Like, like I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Whether no, they were hurt or not, great. the distance I was away, because also everything was muffled because I couldn't really hear so then by it being muffled through the glass, all I heard was crashing, like the crashing of glass and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But then a little bit of like, oh, <laughs> because because my man that was on the bike caught some air. OK, like oh, he didn't like damn. he didn't fly forever. But like, OK, let me. Th- OK, I'm trying to describe the trajectory the best because. Right. There are some people listening, some people watching. So <laughs> the guy is like hitting the first person. But when he's hitting the first person, the bike is most of what's hitting the first person. So the right. bike is what's really driving that person into the into the table and knocking them sideways. Mm-hmm. When he launches off the bike, it's into the person who was sitting across from them. But it doesn't oh. it doesn't fully stop there. So he he hits the person. So he launches into into a spear move. <laughs> into like kind of a spear. I'm surprised the second person did explode because he <laughs> he launches into a spear, which knocks them back and over, but then he keeps flying a little bit. Oh, so the the second person ostensibly is a ramp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the <laughs> second person of- the, the second person caught it and that's what knocked them down. Right, and then he, and then he lands like maybe a foot away from where they landed. Ugh. So he flew very well. Like like if he was I mean, yeah. instead, Ev- of, everyone sounds hurt. <laughs> yeah, instead of, if he was not trying to deliver something and he was trying to fly, mission accomplished. Because my man <laughs> flew. Like when you when <laughs> okay when you looked from the window because I did get up and go to the window. When you looked at the window, where the bike was to where he landed was like at least three bikes. Like he he flew three bikes deep. I'm pretty sure my measurements are just wrong, so I'm just going by bikes. Because everything got pushed at least a bike away from where it was, right? So, so I, that's what I tell my math students to do. If you get confused, just measure in bikes. Yeah, just measure in bikes. Yeah. People understand the ballpark of where you are. By by the way, ballpark, 664 bikes, okay? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, actually a big-ass ballpark probably in bikes. Yeah, but that's if you lay them down. <laughs> They would still be the same length. Just because you. No, no, you lay them down. It's different. Yeah. <laughs> they still, still the same length. Oh, every, everybody on. knows that bikes are longer when they're sideways. Don't embarrass <laughs> me in front of these people. <laughs> Tip that bike it's, over it's the it's same. You sound dumb right now, okay? <laughs> It's the same length, whether it's right side up or it's sideways. Tell that to the bike. Tell that to the bike that got crashed because that bike was much shorter by the time <laughs> well, that dude that, landed. That's not because it was sideways. That's because it rammed into a, a customer very hard from the sounds of it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cu- no, you've, you've never told me that story. That is. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's a brutal thing to see. It, dude, it was, it was really bad. And it, and in my head, even when it happened in my head, I was like, even if this cyclist had tried on purpose mm-hmm. to do this to the restaurant, he would have barely made it through the glass. <laughs> But the fact that they were just, you just open hit it and just all the way down. Yeah, the fact that these these people were open out there oh. in the air, exposed, <laughs> is why they got got the way they did. They were exposed. They, to yeah, bike. they were just out here living yeah. raw, and then got hit by a bike. Living raw. Yeah, you can't just no protection at all. You gotta be ready for bike. Yeah, you have to be ready for bike. One hundred percent. You never know. So at least put one of those big padded like bear suits on or something, because you gotta protect yourself from bike. Or at least a helmet. Uh, That's irresponsible. You getting slammed into the <laughs> slammed into the table. That's what some restaurants will start doing that to be like, hey, to cut down on liability, we ask that anyone eating on the patio wear a helmet. Also. I really wanted to know. They, they spray them out like bowling shoes and just, give, there you go, there's your helmet. I've thought about this for so long. I mm-hmm. wonder what they were talking about before the cyclist hit. Like, I almost wish they were fighting. Like, I almost, I yeah. almost wish they were like, I don't even know you anymore. And then, bow. <laughs> You're just you're just a thorn in my side. You're a real pain in my ass. Oh! Yeah. Or they were it having provided. a pleasant conversation. They were like, yeah. oh, my gosh, the enchiladas are so... Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Showing pictures of their kids. And Amelia's four. Yeah, she's... Oh, my God! It would, I, would, I really wished... Ugh, it would have been so... It, like, as funny as it was to watch, because everybody eventually got up, and they didn't look great. Like, they had their scrapes. They were they were definitely hurt, but <laughs> they they left changed. Yeah, yeah. This was a, this was a life changing hey, meal. <laughs> hey, can I tell you though? Can I tell you the couple that got hit? What they do? They came inside. They took came inside? their ass inside and sat at a table mm-hmm. like civilized people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then acted like nothing happened. The cyclist limped away on his broken bike, but. I would have loved if they were lawyers and they were like, now these documents are really... (laughs) (laughs) No! (laughs) Salsa and blood. (laughs) Salsa and blood. (laughs) And copyrighted (laughs) uh, confidential documents (laughs) flying through the air. Uh, You... You see those things like you, like you, you specifically, because mm-hmm. you've seen you've seen men trip on bananas. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A genuine, that was a dope. genuine cartoon thing. That was, I'm still jealous. That's that I. Was like it's fire. the main thing. It's the main thing I'm jealous of you of. Yeah. Career stuff. I don't really care. You yeah. getting to see that man <laughs> slip on a banana. Yeah. That's seeing the face of God. Panic in his eyes. Yeah. You see stuff like this. You see, you see men dropping their spaghetti on the bus. You, yeah. <laughs> you, I'm starting to wonder. Uh huh. If there's if there's something something deeper going on here. There's some sort of you're 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 some sort of yeah. You know strange what? blessed individual because you're always near these things, but you don't really get into like you don't fall down a ton and get hurt. Like it happens what? sometimes. I no, fall I down guess. all the time. Dude, the burger. <laughs> the burger. That's true. Okay. I did. Okay, still. Okay. So generally you're a magnet for these situations. Sure, sure. But I'm also out a lot. By being true. out a lot. If I if you go out every because here's the thing. Lived in New York six years. If you mm-hmm. go out in New York every day for six years, things will just start to run together as they happen. If we True. if we did the podcast every day, I wouldn't have as much to talk about as far as what I've seen. It'd be more talking about <laughs> ideas. You'd be indoors more. Yeah, I'd be indoors gotcha. more. But yeah. doing the podcast once a week versus an entire week of being outside. 
hey, too much is you happening. Still, you still seem like a magnet for him, though, because I That's go also out. why I'm exhausted. That's, what, that's why I started this episode. <laughs> I literally started this episode by saying it's, like, not fun anymore. <laughs> so you've, you've peaked on experience now. You are Dude. done. You are done having Josh Johnson show adventures. Dude, imagine if you just and and luckily this has only happened to me once. But imagine if you just saw two middle aged people maybe die <laughs> once a month. <laughs> Eventually, you'd be like, "Hey, I think I'm just gonna take Ubers now and Seamless and do my spot and go home." Oh, very true. Uh, I don't, I still I understand that, but I still think yeah. you are a specific magnet for him though too. Because even when I'm out and go on adventures, or I'm you know work, I like people always ask me if I have stories because I work with kids and stuff. I work at the I'm a sub. You think funny stuff would happen being around a bunch of chaotic children all mm-hmm. the time? No, not really. Do you talk to them a lot? What do you mean talk to them a lot? Like, I feel like even even now, even in this episode, there mm-hmm. was a point where you said, see, that's what I was trying to get to, right? So from right. talking long enough, I finally gave you something that was interesting where you were like, that's what I was wondering. Does that make sense? I think that with with kids sometimes, it's like, because they because they don't know much, they don't have a lot of life experience, and they don't know a lot of things... Anything interesting that they have to say is after like. Oh no no! I, I'm also not even talking about them. What they say, I'm just talking about them being chaotic balls of rubber. Oh, you think I'd oh. you think I'd see more chaos, and I don't. But the chaos finds you, is what I'm saying. Oh no! I no. That's I see. what I, that's I see. what I'm getting at. I'm in situations where chaos should be abound, mm-hmm. but tis not. Also, maybe when, when but it's happening to you a lot. I know I'm more, I'm more of a shut in than you. I mean, not a shut in, but I, that's not the no, right no, word. I, but, no, I feel but you. But I stay yeah. in more than you. But still, you you see the craziest of the craziest, and I'm just starting to wonder: is there some sort of uh, curse? Have, are you I, some sort of strange chosen child? I think it's literally just math. I think it's like if you go out every day for seven days, and if you travel two of those right. seven days. Then, Fair. like, eventually, because, like, when you think about it, it's like a lot of it's happening. Some of it's happening. This is the first time that we've talked about eating out and why I don't like eating outside and why. But <laughs> Well, let's be careful with that wording. Sure. But I I feel like a lot Josh of it has Logan been airports. Josh and Logan talk eating out. <laughs> and it's like, you know, just the places that I am. But I never see anything fun in airports either. I'm in airports pretty often too. You've seen full on fights in airports. I know you're in airports way more than me. Yeah, but I took spirit. Like, like this is the thing. I, right. I guess, I guess to me, it doesn't feel abnormal because I'm also being put in, or sometimes putting myself in less than ideal situations for for me to have a normal day. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's true. I guess, yeah, you leave the house yeah. striving to not have a regular day. Dude, I, I yeah, I went on a Because you're like, I'm going to talk to strangers. And- <laughs> I went on a four-hour walk. That's not going to be conducive with nothing Damn. happening. Yeah, that's fair. That's that's, that's the fair. walk I was talking about where I stopped at the at the place. Right. But it's like okay. a four-hour walk. Like, I even have to steal myself sometimes to be like, listen, just to me in a mirror, listen. <laughs> If you go on this three-hour walk right now, you are probably going to have something happen. (laughs) This is not a safe or good place that you live. This will not be the relaxing experience you're hoping for. If you walk to Queens, you will see something. (laughs) You know what I mean? Because that's the other thing that I find, too, with people where you look at L.A. as a great example. So... I, it took me a while to learn my lesson that New York and LA were different in terms of walking to where even if you could walk, you shouldn't necessarily walk depending on where you're walking, no no matter the time of day. Because when I was in San Francisco and we were recording those episodes remote, 
you walked into a wedding, so you got to be careful. And that can was just anywhere. a walk between episodes because I was like, oh, okay, this place is a mile and a half away, so I'm just going to mm-hmm. go there, walk there, walk back. And it was it was insane, and half of it was horrible. Like, <laughs> True. It was not good. So I think that that's what it is. I honestly, because you're not the first person to be like, how does all this stuff? And I also don't look at it as happening to me. I see it as happening. But, but still getting to be a witness. You're still, I see a, what you you're still near it. And I'm yeah, yeah, I, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes mm-hmm. people are just like anything crazy happened, you know, when you were in New York or LA. I'm like, eh, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know. Um so I I'm just saying I don't want to rule out some sort of curse or prophecy, just putting that out there. Oh gosh. Okay. I'm just saying that you you are somehow the the magnet. I don't know. There's something it's a good thing. Mm. I don't know. I'm just saying. Mm. Another option is that I just thought of. Because you do see a lot of these things when you're out. But we also talk a lot about how bad your eyes are. So there is a chance that anytime you just see a flourish of colors, (laughs) your brain fills it in (laughs) as violent chaos. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you're. (laughs) Everyone in New York really knows how to throw hands. (laughs) Like, everybody in Queens is so good at exploding. Really good. It's crazy. So there's also that. There's also maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if you just got glasses, then suddenly you'd be like, why is life so boring all of a sudden? I don't see anything anymore. I mean, it could happen. It's like it's like those people who always want a certain type of car and then they get it and they're like, eh, okay. Yeah. Or they immediately crash it. Yeah. Or something like that. Okay. I'm just trying to build out the JJU. Mm. I feel like we haven't we haven't fully gotten into the bed there's i'm what i'm creating is a prequel series <laughs> Jeez. about your adventures yeah <laughs> which is what uh what uh you know magical amulet you have in your house that leads to all these things mm. um i do want to go way way back to something you mentioned i meant to say it earlier but then we were talking about the bike story yeah but you were talking about in spider-man 2 the slow motion but you know, car coming through. But then you said no. If it was that, but no one moved. And in that moment, you made me realize how terrible of a power Spidey sense would be by itself. Yeah, if you just had it, but you didn't. If you have, you would just to... know for a while that something <laughs> bad was going to happen. <laughs> you you would get the slow motion experience of being crushed by a car. Yeah. <laughs> and, but no. Just you no. like oh oh no fuck. Did you ever? Okay, I apparently that uh, <laughs> apparently that Dane Cook joke is a real thing. Where the woman was at a NASCAR event and a tire came off in an accident and it flew into the stands and hit her. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a famous thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I feel like that's the best <laughs> example of it. It's like you see yeah. the tire coming from so far away. <laughs> but yeah. you you don't feel nimble enough to get away, and you're mm-hmm. also just mesmerized by the fact you're like a deer in headlights where it's like, is this really going to hit me? And so you just kind of throw up a hand, maybe. I remember I did that with a basketball where this kid, I, first of all, they were too big to for me to play with, but like that was PE, so it's just part mm-hmm. of life. But yeah. uh, in junior high, a bunch of kids had been like, out sick or something this day in in uh junior high and it was like for whatever reason maybe i was in high school i don't know i was like a puny kid anyway but like Mm -hmm. for whatever reason i was on i was one of three scrawny kids in two basketball teams worth of kids playing basketball for pe right so we split the court for each team and you couldn't cross because that's the other people's game whatever Right, yeah. And this kid passed the ball to me so hard. It was it's honestly I've I've been hit with a baseball and I still think that basketball was faster. Like <laughs> this kid passed it the way you throw a dodgeball to hit somebody, right? Right. And it's coming at me so fast that all I can do is like <laughs> mm-hmm. all I could do is put my hand out. <laughs> And I, <laughs> I put my hand out for what should be a catch. 
Like, you yeah. know how, okay, this is, this is the best way I can think of to explain it. In physics, sometimes something... <laughs> Sorry, I was just not expecting that to be the first two words of that explanation. In physics class, they taught us. In physics, yeah. In physics class, they taught us that sometimes <laughs> the speed of an object will, uh-huh. will like fully change the, the result that you're expecting. So instead of a ball bouncing off of a wall, if it's shot hard enough into the wall, it'll either explode or go through the wall, depending on what the wall is made of. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the ball is coming at me. I stick my hand out, not like an athlete, but just... <laughs> <laughs> no, you've never done that. Why start now? Just like someone who knows a ball is coming, right? <laughs> So my hand's not out in a defensive position. I'm not like this, but my hand's Uh out in a way that I I can at least catch it, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. It's coming at me so fast that I don't have enough time to get the palm in the way of the center point of the ball. And so all it does, and I watch it happen because my hand's like this far out, right? Mm -hmm. The ball's coming at me. I watch it slowly and it, it truly happened in slow motion in my mind. I watch it slowly bend my fingers back and betray my face. Just like <laughs> it was Yeah, your hand gave up your face. Yeah, because it was it was coming so fast that I put my hand out, it bent my hand back like this mm-hmm. and just was open season on my face. And <laughs> the ball hit me in the face so hard that I uh <laughs> that I, (laughs) my head went back, the ball went, (laughs) this is so insane, so my head goes back, but I could swear to you, I was maybe concussed, so who knows if I'm, if Mm -hmm. I'm right about this, but the ball hits me so far, moves my hand, hits my face, and I could almost promise you keeps going in the same direction, like my face had no... (laughs) had had no influence on where the ball went next so it just sort of knocked my face out of the way and they kept traveling so this dude literally passed it almost through me right through your face and so i'm so so it moves my hand moves my face i hit the ground and i just hear every like everybody go ooh, yeah that's and I don't even try to open my eye. <laughs> and they, and they, they weren't even saying it for you. They were saying because the ball went through you so fast it hit someone else behind you. <laughs> Dude, I do, when I tell you I didn't even attempt to get up, open my eye. <laughs> nope. You don't need to live in that reality. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> it, I genuinely felt like my hand, like my wrist was sprained. Like... <laughs> I've never, I've never Damn. had anything. When I tell you this kid threw the ball at me, like, I didn't know anyone could do it. And honestly, he was a little, like, I don't know, too strong to begin with. <laughs> like, for real. Like, he, like. Hey, man, like, can I be, dude, hey, can I get real with you for a second? This guy is just too jacked. Like, in, too dude, strong. It, it Who looked like, that? for real, Who it looked like he was taking steroids strong? for P.E. <laughs> It looked like this kid was straight up on roids for PE because I remember on the first day this of school. This kid better be pitching for the Mets now or something. Cause Dude, when, when I went to. Sounds like he had a future. The first day of school, okay? And they gave us our uniforms to uh, change out in and everything. Okay. I saw that kid and I was like, that's not a kid. <laughs> that's Randy Johnson. Dude, like. <laughs> this this child was so jacked. I was like, he should be teaching, because a PE teacher out of shape. This kid right here is doing the stuff today. He's doing yeah. currently. I want to. I want to know what he's up to. Yeah, he has a master's degree in physical. He's look at this kid. He's built like a brick shit house. Got an arm like a rocket. Come on, let him just let him teach. It was it was, dude. I I couldn't believe it hit me that hard. That's great. No, it's not. 
Oh, okay. Not for me. Say, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I might be a different person if that ball <laughs> never hit me in oh. my head. Honestly, bro, to tie it back in, I think that might explain your eye problem. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you got in the face so hard you only see violence now. <laughs> Dude, this kid threw the ball. I don't even know how you, I wouldn't even know how to begin. I don't know how you're alive, to be honest, because it sounds like it went through your face. <laughs> the fact that it moved my head for me. <laughs> <laughs> for you? Yeah. Dude, this didn't like this didn't hit me in the face and I and it bounced off and then went somewhere. Right. It kept no, your head traveling off. the same <laughs> the same direction <laughs> as if a person wasn't in the way. <laughs> it probably could have broke my collarbone if <laughs> if this I surprised didn't break your nose or something. Too well, you no, know, it was too high. It was too it was, I thought about that because I was like Man, this like oh, my okay. my whole when I tell you my whole head hurt. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cause I must Josh, have, Josh doesn't remember the three month coma he was in after that. Dude, I must have I'm looking back, I must have been moving out of the way slightly or something. Like right. I think sometimes you know how when someone goes to punch you, if you're not a fighter and someone goes to punch you, you'll like close your eye if they're too close. Like if you know they're gonna make contact, you'll like flinch. Sure. Mm-hmm. I think that my whole body, as soon as it hit my hand and it moved my hand, the millisecond my body had left, it was like <laughs> we need to just leave. <laughs> Yeah, just every every party you took over, like a like a cat when it jumps, just inherently just knows to spring up and around. Dude, this was it was so bad. Oh, oh I was so I was I was like, and and then that's a, that's the other thing too. I never really got an attitude with my PE teacher, but that was like the one time I like got up and he's like, Johnson, you all right? I'm like, what? Am I all? Am I? <laughs> it was like it was like the most sass I had probably had with a teacher up to that point because I was just I was so offended by the question because I was like, "No, oh, my man, I'm changed now. Did you change? See now. what happened? For you to even ask if I'm all right, you know I'm not. Do I be? I don't remember how I don't remember how mangoes taste now. It hit me so hard. I have forgotten the flavors, <laughs> bro. I'm tasting. <laughs> I am tasting blood, <laughs> and I do not remember biting myself. Like I like, I think I think that my body just sent me a little bit of blood in my mouth to remind me I was alive. I didn't bite my tongue. I didn't yeah. bite my cheek. But when I woke up, I was like, I could taste adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> my brain is sore. Yeah, this has nothing to do with dining out, but you know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think we found a we have found a whole other thread there, which was, uh, the, <laughs> the final destination life of Josh Johnson. <laughs> Dude, this was uh, just the the Rube Goldbergian chaos, like of, just, of a day with Josh. I'm not saying you have to coddle kids, but like let them play with kids. This kid is clearly an adult. It's happened to me a couple times in my life where I've had uh, to play yeah. with a guy that was like too big for us. <laughs> and I'm like, this is this you need to stop this. Let him do his pull-ups by himself. He clearly wants to be strong. Let him be strong <laughs> somewhere else. You got him playing basketball <laughs> with regular kids, strong. with regular children. You have him playing basketball. It's goofy. It's like it's like His, you you should be ashamed of yourself that you thought this was like yeah. a competitive game. These aren't playmates. These are victims. Dude, Send this man elsewhere. This kid had so much hair. <laughs> like we're, a, we're we're talking about goatee, like, like <laughs> No, no, we're we're talking about a kid who is like it's almost like he's growing up in a different time. 
Because you know how men in like the, I don't know, whatever, like the 1800s would have like, right. since they lived You'd, to be 36, they'd have a full chest hair at 10 right. or whatever. Yeah. This kid is like living like that. Because not only is he stronger than everyone, he's got so much hair. Like he puts on mm. his, his, his PE shirt and we see the hair coming out from the collar and everything. This dude is testosterone. Now, would we consider a teen wolf scenario? It would make more sense than just a, a <laughs> child being that strong. Than just, either that, than just a large, strong man. Either that dude has been held back and is low-key lying about his age and has been held back mm -hmm. for five years straight. Yeah. Or he's a teen wolf because <laughs> none of it makes sense. Sound like you said Teen Wolf, which I really liked. Yeah, Teen Wolf. <laughs> sounds like the, sounds like the lame knockoff Teen Wolf. Yeah, Teen Wolf. Two Fs, one U. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to theaters Friday. Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. <laughs> um. Shall we open up the mailbag? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's open up the mailbag. Got a couple here. This one, I just did a weird move around the mic for no reason there with my phone. Uh, this one is from Becky, a.k.a. Recky, I believe. Mm -hmm. Or is it Reeky? W-R-E-K-Y. Um, and it just says, now I've seen everything. Squeaks in Toontown. I know you're headed to Sacramento this weekend, and I'm stoked to see you Friday. That's right. Uh, update. Sadly, I will not be there this weekend. Um, some stuff came up, but Josh will still be there. And he, you know, he's the one who's like faces on the website and everything. So you're gonna be fine. <laughs> so it's still gonna be good. Go 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 see Josh. Um, I thought I'd share this stunning house that just went up for sale in my neighborhood. <laughs> Best viewed on a computer taken the full glory of this beauty. It belonged to a psychiatrist who does uh, does it in the house. I'm still at a loss for words. I'm told it's even crazier in person. Let me know if you want to join me for a tour this weekend. Uh, <laughs> I guess let me... Sorry, I should have brought this up on the computer maybe. Oh, God. Yep, okay. Hang on. Got to open this for you. You got to see the inside of this house real quick. From the outside, looks very unassuming. On the inside, uh, chaos. And yeah, maybe we'll put a, we'll put the listing in the. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so pretty normal outside, right? Yeah. Regular house, and then it takes a hard left turn. That's so upsetting. <laughs> For the people just listening, well, yeah, we'll put the link maybe down below. But it's. It, it looks like if SpongeBob was into kink. Because <laughs> it's even better, too, because I'm looking at this. I don't have my glasses on, so I can still see it, but not great. So the wavy stuff really makes me feel like I'm having some sort of seizure. It's very just squiggly and... Uh, like, Van, like Van Gogh. This is what Van Gogh saw on his head. And why he was so depressed. Oh my god, there's a tree in it. This is uh this is like really messed up. <laughs> like this should be illegal. It looks like a mistake. Oh my god. Whoever did this is is a sick person. Well, especially it said they're a psychiatrist that would do appointments in house. Yeah, nah, that's I want this is the house want... from uh the first <laughs> The first season of American Horror Story. Like, imagine you're not feeling oh great. Yeah, that kitchen then looks busted. I don't know what's going on there. That's a hard. They they didn't put as much work into this. <laughs> I think this they put the sides. same amount of work. And the kitchen is just the place where it all just really comes together. There's no excuses. And then there's just a bunch of blank room. Yeah, because the other rooms, I think, Ooh, I wonder if these were wee. painted to try to cover it up, but then. Wow, that's a whole landscape. That's a lot. That's too much. That's too much. That's really upsetting. Like it. Wow. Well, Josh, you can you can go you have a go on a viewing to burn. 
Yeah, it looked pretty expensive too. Yeah. Yeah. And by million dollars to burn, I mean it would be better for you to burn a million dollars than buy this house. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to the Josh Johnson show. I had a great time recording. Hope you had a great time listening. If you are looking to catch up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, where we're posting clips of the show. You may be watching one right now. And if you're looking for Logan, you can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen. And if you want to get into our mailbag and send us upsetting houses, uh, you can do that. Uh, Josh Johnson show at gmail.com. You can also leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts because we like to read those in the show as well. And if you just want some more bonus content, different podcasts, different video stuff, come join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Johnson show. Uh, we got a lot of fun stuff there. All those links are in the uh, bio below, as well as tickets to see Josh in Sacramento. Uh, Again, sorry I'm not going to be there. We lied last week. <laughs> also, one last thing that I'm throwing mm -hmm. out there. If you are watching this on YouTube and you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe. You know, maybe tell a friend. And if you really hated it, sure. tell someone that's not a friend. Yeah. You're like, this isn't for me, but you know who it is for. Fucking Daniel. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, you made me think of one more thing. We do have another virtual show coming up, and I believe that is Sunday, I'm going to say October, got it up, October 16th at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, right? That's the one we picked? Yep. <laughs> yep. So that's coming up in just a week and a half about, so another virtual show. We're having to do this one a little bit earlier because we're going to be on the road at the end of October. Actually, I, I mean it this time, that I'll be on the road with Josh at the end of October. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Goodbye. Goodbye.